Hey what's up guys, Sam here with Custom PC Review and today I'm going to talk about a topic that can be pretty intimidating for new gaming PC builders and that is choosing the motherboard. So thanks to this old Gigabyte X58 motherboard, I will do a quick walkthrough of choosing a motherboard and hopefully this will help you choose it in your next computer build. So the first thing you have to look for is the form factor and as you can see from this motherboard right here, it is a full size ATX motherboard. Now they also sell a smaller form factor and that would be the micro ATX form factor and it should be about like that big. So just enough for usually one PCI Express 16X slot. Otherwise, there are also extended ATX and HPTX, which are for people who intend to run like three or four way SLI. So uh, with the form factor out of the way, I do typically recommend people to buy a standard sized ATX motherboard and I'll kind of get into that a little bit later. So the first thing I typically do when looking for a brand new motherboard is look for the brand and the warranty and of course reviews. Now the big three in motherboards is of course Gigabyte. There's also Asus and MSI. So it's usually a safe bet to go with them. Otherwise smaller manu manufacturers such as ASRock, ECS, Zotac, Biostar, as well as some others have produced some great stuff. But definitely you should read some reviews prior to purchasing these boards. So the first thing you need to do when purchasing a motherboard or even a computer in general is decide the chipset you're going to use the motherboard with. So this chipset is going to limit the CPU choices you have. Now this one right here is the X58 chipset. And of course it works only with socket LGA1366. And that means your CPU needs to be LGA1366. Now with Sandy Bridge, you do have a choice in Z68, P67, H61, H67. And each of these chipsets do things a little bit differently. However, they will all take LGA1155 CPUs. So definitely we wanna do some research prior to purchasing the motherboard on which chipset is right for you. Now with AMD, you do have greater compatibility in the socket, and theirs is typically AM2, AM2+, AM3, AM3+, um, things like that. But you do have to make sure that the motherboard will support the TDP or the thermal design power of the CPU. So you might want to check that out on some review sites or things like that. Okay, so as you can see over here in this area and, and around here, uh, you do have the VRM. And the reason I'm talking about the VRM is pretty much because this is a gaming PC, so a lot of people will want to overclock. And typically, a better VRM area, which is the power delivery method to your motherboard, will give you a better overclocking ability. However, don't just rush out and buy the biggest, best over, uh, motherboard with the largest VRM and the most power states. You do typically have to know exactly what you're doing to actually utilize the full features of the motherboard. And the next consideration on a motherboard is the memory slots. And as you can see here on this X58 board, we do have six memory slots. And typically when you're buying memory or when you're even choosing a chipset, um, you really have to think about what kind of memory goes into the motherboard or what's compatible with the CPU. Here we have the X58 chipset, which means we are going to be able to access triple channel memory. And that means when you go out and buy memory, you have to buy three sticks at a time to realize the maximum benefits of triple channel memory. Now if you have like an AMD CPU or you're going with the socket 1155 Sandy Bridge CPUs, typically what will happen is like this. So you'll really only need two channels of memory because they're dual channel. So 
um, you'll have to purchase two sticks of memory at a time. Now if you're getting like LGA 2011, the newest X79 chipset, then they have what's called quad channel memory and you'll have to pretty much buy four sticks of memory at a time to realize the maximum effects of the memory. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. So the next thing we're going to go to is down here and that would be the amount of drive connectors. And as you can see here on this motherboard, we have six SATA to three gigabit per second ports. And this will directly translate into how many drives you will be installing in your computer. Now, there are ways to add additional ones through add-in cards. However, for the most part, you're gonna be using these. So if you have like eight drives, you're definitely gonna want eight SATA ports. Now, this is an older board, but with newer boards, you will also see like two white SATA ports and then you'll see uh, four blue ones or things like that. And the, the white ones pretty much signify that they are SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports. And if you plan on purchasing an SSD or something like that that supports SATA 3 6 gigabit per second, you do want to plug your SSDs into the SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports for the maximum amount of performance. So the next thing we're gonna run through on this motherboard is the PCI Express slots. And this is typically where they are. Now, this one right here is a PCI Express X16 slot. And as you can see, we have uh, three of these. Now this one down here, I know you can't really see it, but it is blocked off at this point right here. And so only the, after this point, there's nothing. So this is actually a PCI Express X4, I believe, speed that you can run it at. While these right here do have capability for the full 16, however, if you do run SLI, they will revert back to eight. And these are pretty much where you're going to install your video cards. Now, I do recommend most purchasers for gaming machines to get a motherboard with SLI support or SLI or Crossfire support. And that's because you do have to think uh, in the long term, you might want to buy two video cards or something like that. Now, if you're only planning to buy one video card for now and in the future, then just one of these is enough. So you might be able to get away with a micro ATX or something like that, which is a bit cheaper typically. Now here there are also three PCI Express 1 slots and off of the top of my head I can only think of two uses for a gaming machine that would use this and one of them would be the Bigfoot uh, Killer Nick card if you are interested in purchasing one of those and the other would be a sound card. So if you are going to be using one of those you definitely want a couple PCI Express 1X slots. Of course, you can plug those into the longer slots as well. So with sound cards and things like that, you pretty much are able to do, uh, able to plug it into pretty much um, any motherboard, you know, in, in any of these slots right here. So uh, this one right here is a regular traditional PCI slot. So if you have like a really outdated uh, sound card or something like that, that would go in there. but. Um, that wouldn't be a feature that I'd be looking for when I purchase my motherboard. Um, another thing, and I'm just going to show you right here, is the motherboard headers. And you do have to, you might have to look out for it if, you know, it matters. And this is basically going to tell you what kind of things you can plug in from your case. So like this motherboard, you only have USB 3, um, USB 2. USB 1, or that's not USB 3.0, but these are all USB uh, 2.0 front panel headers. And basically it tells you that you can only have USB on the front panel. So if you were expecting to plug in, let's say Firewire from um, your new case, uh, you might not be able to do that. So definitely you want to watch out for that. And the final thing I am going to cover is going to be this part right here and that's just the back IO panel and typically most people are already going to watch out for this but um, I'm just going to run over through it anyway. Right here you have some PS2, you have the coaxial audio port, you have six USB 
2.0s, two USB 3.0s, and USB 3.0s are typically uh, in blue, so you can recognize them pretty easy. There's also a LAN port and six audio ports. And as you can see, again, no firewire. So if that's something you were interested in, definitely make sure you pick up a motherboard that has that support. So this was just pretty much my quick run through of a motherboard and a couple tips um, on how to buy them. And I know this is pretty general, so you guys probably do have questions. So um, basically just leave a comment if you do have questions or go to forums at forums.custompcreview.com and I'll do my best to help you out. So if this helps even a, a, at all, even a little bit, like, favorite, and subscribe as usual. Uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.